Alright, so I wanted to start today's episode, as long as the lag isn't too bad, with showing you guys something cool in Divinity Reach. I've mentioned it a couple of times, um, and if we're not going to do a full city tour here, I at least need to show you this, uh, because it's kind of nuts, um, and uh, it's very exciting and interesting, particularly for future content. It might not be, like, crazy mind-blowing, or as cool as it looks in the end. I know I'm being very vague. Um, but it might end up being something pretty decent. Uh, for now, though, we should be aware of its existence. I am talking, of course, about... Duh, duh, duh. Oh, this worked out really well. The Great Collapse. Oh, we even have a vista we can watch. So, this is one of the districts in Divinity's Reach. Um, that, as I said, it would, actually, I've heard some conflicting reports about this now. I'm pretty sure, though, this was the Entertainment District. Uh, I'm going to stick with my guns there. Someone told me it was the Canton District, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't, or at least it was being built with Canton architecture, and the idea was that that's why it failed. But in any case, um, it's this massive, massive, the Vista didn't really show it off, pit. Uh, a massive, giant hole that suddenly appeared, and the wall as well, on the side of Divinity's Reach, totally collapsed down. Now, the idea is couple of years I believe, maybe even not uh, a question of years, it could be a question of months before the events of Guild Wars 2 um, this just suddenly collapsed and it just appeared out of nowhere. The idea is the foundations of the city were pretty much ruined and wrecked we do hear in the novels, in the books about the fact about how like there's this giant sewer system down there um, and it seems quite extensive and supposedly that kind of collapsed which is uh, very interesting now um, I mentioned and that's really it, we just got a big hole there right, so if I press M and we can see the Great Collapse here, that's this district. So a lot of the entertainment stuff was then spread elsewhere throughout the city. In fact, we may have already seen, or possibly, uh, there's this giant thing here called the uh, Mechanical Orchestra, which is uh, an interesting sight actually in Divinity's Reach because there's lots of confetti and stuff in the air near there. And some of the earliest des descriptions we had of this city were that it was like constantly being festive and it had confetti and stuff everywhere, which was really weird and I don't think many people... Like if you look at the early trailers as well, Stand you can back. see it all over the place. Too dangerous for civilians beyond this point. Okay, sure. Um, and you could see in the early trailers there was all this confetti everywhere, and I think maybe their original ideas were that there was loads of confetti all over Divinity Reach, but then slowly it like changed uh, as time went on. But And I'm talking very early development here. But yeah, so uh, this kind of all collapsed down. It's an interesting story, and do you remember, as I, I mentioned before, that you could s listen to NPCs and stuff around cities? Um, well, this is a perfect example of that, and of being able to miss really cool dialogue. Uh, pretty much all of the NPCs you see stood around here, around this place, like these two people here, uh, they do all have dialogue eventually, if I wait here long enough. In fact, I'm going to do it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate a point, I'm going to wait by these people, I'll see you guys in a second. Oh shit, what if I'm wrong? How long am I going to be here for? Oh no. Come on. Don't let me down. Ah, oh, I think I'm wrong. I, I, I've been waiting here for five minutes now. Okay, those two probably don't have any dialogue. Probably. But most of these guys do. The point does still stand. Most of these guys do around here have dialogue. And this is the thing. It's easy to miss them. I, I don't know for sure whether they don't. Uh, but I've certainly seen quite a few of the NPCs around here um, that do have things to say. And they will uh, utter little things and teach us a little bit more about this massive great collapse here. What was going on. For example, we find out that the Queen kind of seemed to know it was going to happen before it did. And she ordered the evacuation of everyone so no one was harmed. Which is curious. Why did she know it was going to happen just before it did? Uh, and you can hear other stuff as well around the city about how there were drakes down here and, and so forth. And there's even this really cool thing here too, this gate, that uh, seems to, like, it looks as if eventually we'll be able to go through there. And there's this character we can speak to who says, I know it still looks hazardous on the surface, but the new foundation is coming along nicely. Rest assured we won't have to worry about another collapse. Well, let's hope so. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's very interesting. I think that it will at the very least be a dungeon in the future. But it could also be that if when they do big expansions and the personal story continues forward um, and let's say then we do return to our individual races stuff this could be something we get to see at that point uh, either way it's very interesting loads of things going on here's some shining blade here uh, that's just a cool part of divinity's reach that i was only supposed to show you guys for a couple of minutes but in any case what are we doing are we kind of finished everything right we've kind of done chapter Imagine one oh here we go people would have been injured if the queen hadn't evacuated the area before it collapsed it's not just that i've heard strange noises coming from that place and i doubt it's just the earth settling 
you know, it would have been really nice if they spoke about something or had some information other than what I just gave to you guys. Uh, but yeah, lots of people do have things to say anyway. Um, yeah, so what are we doing here? Are we kind of finished chapter one? We put Zamon down. We kind of think this other guy might have been behind it, possibly, but we don't really have much more to think about on that topic. What are we doing? Well, we got a mysterious message, uh, a mysterious mail here. So as you can see, um, it just says, a friend, you are not alone. Presumably, by the way, with these, I like to think that the title is what it says on the outside of the envelope and then you open it up and this is what it says inside it's kind of the way I've always imagined it anyway it says uh, my friend congratulations on your recent accolades as the hero of Shamor I'm a researcher for the Queen's archives and I've recently uncovered some information regarding your parents I thought you might want to see it I would prefer to discuss the details in person so if you will meet me at the palace gardens at divinity's reach I'll share them with you to prove I am what I say, I have enclosed half of an amulet, which I believe will match a broken one you've owned since you were born, something my research led me to uncover. I look forward to meeting you face to face. Sincerely, a friend. So, chapter two, remember character creation? We made two choices, we made three choices. One was a god, didn't do anything. And then one was uh, like what our background was, which we said noble, and we've kind of seen that. And the other one was that we never knew our parents. We were kind of raised in an orphanage. Well, uh, now that we're on chapter two of the story, we get to see what exactly that all means. So uh, we're going to come out here into the middle. By the way, we're back to 1080p and my new TV. I didn't get a monitor in the end, which, uh, hear me out, it, it, it was a good choice. Um, it's massive, it's ridiculous, I didn't think it was going to be this big, so, yes, yeah, so I feel very de decadent and spoiled now, but, yeah, so, uh, yeah, voices of the past, here we go, um, and here's the informant right here in the middle, no need to, uh, dilly-dally or wait around, and we're still in Divinity's Reach as well for the next, uh, bit of the story, anyone have anything to advice, say? No pet is ever truly trained, it's just a beast on a leash. Oh, check it out. Farron's actually with Jasmina. So Farron's still here? I didn't think he had much to do with it, with like chapter two, but hey, at least he's here at the start. Good to meet you. So uh, he's telling a roarious joke there and laughing his ass off. That's brilliant. Hey, Jasmina, do you have anything have to say? I have so much to do. No, I guess not. Uh, someone also said in the comments that apparently that one of the other personal story talks about how like he two times with someone or something. That's quite interesting. What anyway, he says, uh, why, Natalie? Fancy seeing you here. I was just wooing these fine ladies. You aren't here to uh, cut in, are you? I guess this is just a totally random meetup. Sorry, I'd love to stay in chat, but I'm afraid I must meet someone. Excuse me. Ah, uh, oh, yes, uh, I see that old looking fellow making eyes at you. Well, there's no accounting for taste. Do be careful, though. He looks shifty. Oh, well, thanks very much. Thanks for the advice. Uh, I wouldn't dream of interfering with your work. Please continue. My work? Oh, please. As if talking to gorgeous ladies like these is anything but the purest pleasure. Well, if you can earn money out of it, I say go for it. Right, so we got an informant here. Um, hello. You don't look too shady. Actually, he looks quite friendly. Quite endearing. How does it, how, how's it going, Mr. Informant? Are you the one who sent me the amulet? What can you tell me about my family? Please, I have to know. I am and I can, hero of Shamor. I thought you might be interested. I'm not just here to talk, though. I aim to reunite you with your parents. Reunite us? Where are they? Why haven't they looked for me sooner? Oh, don't be like that. I came a long way to find you, you know. And I'm sure they'll explain everything when you meet them. In the mists! Attack! <gasps> what are you doing? Hero. Okay, thanks for calling me a hero. This is something I wanted to do after editing yesterday's video, by the way. I wanted to activate sharpening stones and then use skill 2 to get stent... Oh, it didn't work. What? I wanted to get 10 stacks of bleeding. Holy hell, he hurts. Ow. Uh, will you please attack Mike and not me? I know that that's... Oh, man, Charl Arguin's pretty good. I'm already healed up reasonably well. Skill 4 here helps me to evade, doesn't it? So I should remember that. Also need to try and dodge this guy or maybe interrupt him as much as possible. Wow, this is quite hard. Uh, so this is a level 11 quest. We're only level 10. I'm not too worried, though. Hey, it's the Shining Blade. What's going on? Oh, and some more people. Hey, 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 wait, 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 wait. Do I not get to speak to you? Alright, so these guys help defend. Now, this is an example of what I was talking about in the other episode, of how there are quests in the game where you have to defend or whatever. Um, but if I do die, aside from the fact that it'll be the first time I die on the LP and it'll be very sad, blah, blah, blah. Actually, nothing really... It, it doesn't matter, because I'll just respawn and there'll be just as many enemy kill enemies killed as there ever were. And it'll be like nothing really happened. And it literally will end there. So... 
uh, some of these quests could have been really difficult or interesting, but, and, and that's why, and a few of you guys didn't seem to like the idea when I mentioned it before, and I could see why you, you might not like the idea, especially some of the later quests in the game are a lot longer and it would be uh, a lot worse, presumably. Ooh, hello. Um, but the idea of having actually, actually being able to fail personal story steps, for some missions I think it would work, and this is one in particular, I think it definitely would, because this entire mission we're pretty much just going to be here. I, I'm, unless I'm mistaken, we're just going to be here for this step, uh, defending in, in this location. And it's like, you can't fail, especially with allies with you. Now, they might die, and I don't know whether they'll res up on their own, but if, if it's the case that they can res up on their own, like certain other characters, or they just can't be knocked out, you could, I mean, it really does come down to as basic as, if you can't fight, why is my inventory full again? If you can't fight, then just stand about for long enough, and you'll get through it regardless. And obviously, you can't grind your way through the whole personal story like that, so it's not all doom and gloom, but still. Can I please deposit some stuff aroonies so I can pick up some other stuff, please? Yes, no? Uh, I think it's going to have to be a bit of a goal of mine uh, next episode to actually um, get some more inventory slots. Sorry, Jesus, the these guys are actually kind of worrying. Lots of assassins. So why are we being assassinated? I have to wonder. It depends. We'll have to see as we go forward. Oh, also, actually, I've got a bit of news for you guys, um, too. Aside from this, because we're probably just going to be stood here for a while killing these same guys. Um, today, hopefully this goes alright. Uh, I'm going to... I mean, we were talking in the comments before about um, daily and what's going on with that. And why I'm kind of having problems with it. I should probably say... Oh, she just said death to the white mantle. Why would she say that? Oh, more guys. I should probably mention actually on a video what, what, what was going on there. Because I've been talking a lot on Twitter and I've been talking a lot in comments and stuff to you guys about what's going on. But I know not everybody gets involved with that. So daily, I do still, I, I still liked and very much enjoyed doing daily. But the main problem with it was after the, the release of the game, and I was a bit worried this would happen too, was that a, a, lot, of the co like, a lot of the questions that I was originally getting were very much suited for like a game before it's been launched. Um, and there are kind of a lot of problems when the game came out with people were still asking questions But they were questions that people either could find out the majority of people would know the answer to or They could they would know it better than I can I haven't seen all of this game And I was kind of hoping for the first couple of weeks that if I just went absolutely nuts Just played loads and loads of the game I could be in a, a serious position where I could just turn around and be able to answer lots of questions and still have that insight that I had before the game came out um, but the, the truth is you just can't compete with you know, a, a community of over a million people playing a game. It, it, there's just no way. I, I felt like I couldn't really offer that perspective anymore for a lot of the questions, um, and and a lot of them just weren't grabbing me as well at the same time. And then there was the question of the the community footage. I did get people submitting it, but not that much. And a lot of the times, actually, I, I kind of just wanted to film my own stuff in the game. So that was another thing, but that was another draw of daily. So it, it was just getting a bit weird. And the news as well, there was a very long time just as the game came out where there wasn't too much news. And news still, there isn't that much to say about Guild Wars 2, even though there are patch notes and stuff. Because the live team, despite what Anet said, hasn't been as frequent with updates as I originally thought they would be. Um, so basically, it just seems like it wouldn't work on a daily kind of basis, or even a five, because I was thinking Monday to Friday as well. But even as a Monday to Friday thing, I don't think it really would work. And I didn't want to do a show called Guild Wars 2 Daily that wasn't actually daily, you know. So, um, yeah, I've kind of just been on tenterhooks with it for a while. Uh, but I've decided, and I'm going to start it after I've filmed this, I'm going to do a Guild Wars 2 Weekly, which is pretty much going to be the same thing, except a lot more news-focused, same kind of um, time frame for what the show's going to be. But it's once a week, and it will just get you caught up on everything that happened with Guild Wars 2. Uh, and hopefully that should be... That, that will definitely be far easier to do. There'll be plenty to talk about each episode and stuff. And that'll be footage coming from me as well, hopefully. So, yeah, that should uh, be interesting. And uh, wish me luck, because I'm going to do it later and hopefully it doesn't bomb terribly. Uh, but in any case, so, right. Back to the plot. Sorry, this isn't a very plot-heavy uh, quest, this one. Um, so, yeah, we came in. Uh, some assassin mentioned some weird stuff about our parents and wanted to kill us for some reason. Why do you want to kill us? What's going on? We got two Shining Blade people here. One of them mentioned White Mantle. Uh, and we can speak to both of them. So let's speak to Mehid first. Oh, it doesn't matter. I guess we get the same uh, cutscene regardless. Excellent work handling those foul cultists, citizen. May they know Grenth's justice. I'm Exemplar Salia of the Shining Blade. This is Exemplar Mehid. A pleasure, I'm sure. You say those were cultists? White Mantle, to be exact. Ancient enemies of Krita. They often target defenders of the kingdom and its queen. I thought the White Mantle were just a children's tale told on Mad King's Day. Why would they have this amulet from my parents, though? 
why bother attacking me? Oh, they're quite real, as you've seen. And judging from the symbol on that amulet, I'd say your family has been very loyal to the kingdom. A mark of the king's favor? That's interesting. Probably from Queen Jenna's father, if I had to guess. We're out to raid a white mantle hideout we found recently. A hunting lodge near Beetleton. It'll be dangerous, but the cultists there may know more. I think I know that hunting lodge. I'll meet you there, and I won't take no for an answer. I can help you on your raid, and maybe I can learn what happened to my parents. Oh man, there's so much I want to say in these cutscenes. Ah, uh, so that lodge, she says, oh, I think I might know what you're talking about. For a typical player, um, you've obviously had to level up and stuff, right? And you probably would have actually been there at this point in the real world, so I quite like that line. Also, they mention um, Salma's, not, not Salma, sorry, Jenna, Queen Jenna, the current queen. Uh, they, they mention her father, so the king before, who, who gave our parents this amulet, supposedly. I think it's really interesting, that makes me think, why they had a queen of Kryta in Guild Wars 1, and then there have been kings of Kryta, between those 250 years, in the intervening years, but now we're Guild Wars 2 and we only have a queen again? It's really weird, and the idea of there being a king is just a very odd concept to me, because I only really know of King Jadon, which was a, the king before the queen in Guild Wars 1. And they, they don't even name the king before the queen in Guild Wars 2, which is a bit of a shame, so... Unless maybe it's mentioned somewhere else a long way away. But yeah, so, uh, very interesting, bit of a mystery there. Um, we're going to be introduced to the White Mantle, which should be a brilliant blast from the past to anyone who is familiar with Guild Wars 1, and also a great uh, kind of excuse for me to talk about <laughs> them to people who don't know who they are in Guild Wars 2. But in any case, so for the completion of the first quest of Chapter 2, we get uh, a ring, um, which comes in the shape of a heart, which is very nice. And uh, we get power, condition damage, or precision. Let's go with power. I don't want to be totally That's boring that. and go power all the time, but we might for a little while. Anyway, also our inventory is full, so can we equip anything? Have I got anything I can show you guys? Well, we are on another day, so I could show you another bit of the UI, I suppose, but I don't know what... Well, I haven't really shown you... I have shown you dyes, haven't I? Hold on, one thing at a time, one thing at a time. Um, let's just consume this bomb. There we go, right. Now we can take the ring. Now we can equip the ring. Also, we have a new bow to use. By the way, this, this bomb was what we bought ages ago. Um when I did post commentary. These things used to have like a really loud explosion sound effect, but it's a lot quieter now, sadly. Uh, we should have eaten some meat pie as well for that. Anyway, I'll, I'll sort out my inventory uh, off screen probably. Next time you see me, I'll probably have loads more. But in any case, there you go, guys. That was uh, this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Let's play Guild Wars 2. There might be another one up as well pretty soon because I'm actually going to film another one now. Um, and then and then I'll go do Guild Wars 2 Weekly, so hopefully that goes well. Uh, but thanks very much for watching. The plot thickens, and I will see you next time on another loading screen.